from the Grits group, Ramona or Miss Beth. There's plenty of others in the Grits group. Um, BYG, they are doing a service project collecting items for fair workers. They're gonna set up baskets for the fair workers. They need to put together 65 baskets or bags, I should say. Um, you can see Miss Leslie if you have any questions, but there is a sheet outside that has like items of things that they want to put inside of these little care bags. So if you're interested in helping out with that, just grab a sheet, um, get the items and then bring them back to the, the church, put them in the basket um, and they'll do the rest. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. There is a countywide reformation service. It will be October 27th at 5 p.m. and it's gonna be at Holy Trinity. Uh, Christmas Cantata, it's time to start practicing. If you're interested in singing with the Christmas Cantata or in the Christmas Cantata, you can see Karen Hall. Um, and then Family Promise has several different um, fundraising events coming up. They have one on October 24th. It's a, a little gala. It will be at Savannah Station. And, and then they, they also have one November 9th. It's a, like a, I guess, a chili cook-off. Um, so there are more information, or there is more information about these two items. If you'll look on the bulletin board in the hallway, right outside the workroom, or I'm sure Miss Connie Baysmore could probably give you more information if you would like to see her as well. I also have an announcement from Karen. Um, so for the fair parade, we always order fair shirts and wear our fair shirts as we walk in the fair parade. Of course, it is not a requirement for you to have a shirt to walk with us in the fair parade, but it does look pretty cool for us to all have our little Bible Lutheran shirts that are matching. So with that being said, if you are interested in ordering a shirt for the fair parade. They are gonna be um, an ice blue color. They are gonna have the, this logo. We'll have this out um, on a table so you guys can look at it. The prices, adults will be $20 and children will be $15. And we only have until the 30th to order them, so it's kind of a really quick turnaround. You can put your name on this sheet that will be outside on the table. But we will also be sending out a Google form um, through email. So if you would prefer to sign up that way as well. Do you anything else to add to that? Okay. Um, anyone else have any other announcements? All right, Pastor, do you have anything? All right, well, we can prepare our minds and hearts for worship. <laughs>
please stand. Let's join together for confession and absolution. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment for prayer and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. We rest now in his peace, and we rise every morning to serve him. Amen. Amen. Let us rejoice and sing, Rejoice, the Lord is King. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace with one another. In my distress, I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Yes, the Lord is for me. He will help me. I will look in triumph at those who hate me. 
First reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 2 through 6, found on page 1126 in the Bible. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith. The second reading is from James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18, page 1199 in the Pew Bible. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Here ends the readings. The Holy, Holy Gospel, Gospel from the 8th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water, and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves. Suddenly the storm stopped and all was calm. He asked them, where is your faith? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Now you may be saying to yourself, that sounds awfully familiar. Well, we could actually preach out of that one section of, uh, of the gospel probably for half the year because there is so much for us to learn from that. Last week, I kind of talked at a level up here to a bunch of the adults in the room. This week, um, as part of the message, I'm actually a little bit later on going to bring the children up and, and have them help with the message and speak directly to them. So while we're in the same story we're going to just look at it there's going to be some of the same points in there but i figured we wanted to look at it in in two different ways <clears throat> well this morning's big idea is that god is for us so who can be against us let's just pray for a moment on that right there father we thank you so much we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. Father, we just ask that you would help us to feel your presence, to, to know that you are with us no matter what our circumstances are like, Lord. Father, help us cling to you. Holy Spirit, speak to us through your word. And in this 
message in Jesus' name. Amen. So God is for us, therefore who can be against us? If only we really believe that, right? I mean, we want to believe it. We try to believe it. We sometimes even will ourselves to believe it, but we can get so frightened about what people and circumstances around us can do to us that we forget who is for us. Well, this morning there are three teachings that I want to share with you to help us believe this and to live this. And while I'm going to be talking at a, a different level today, primarily to the, the children and the youth in there, moms, dads, grandma, and grandpas, don't tune out because these lessons are for you as well. When you face trouble, community is your safety net. Kids, that means friends and that means family. When you experience suffering in life, you need people to cry with you, to celebrate you. I mean, there are situations that nobody should ever have to go through alone. Nobody should ever have to wait alone in a hospital while a loved one is in a life or death surgery. No child should ever have to sit alone while mom or dad are having trouble. No woman should ever have to wait alone for the lab reports from a problem pregnancy. Nobody should have to wait alone for new battlefield. Nobody, nobody should, should have, have to stand alone at the edge of a graveside. And nobody should have to spend the first night alone after a spouse has died or walked out. The fact is, though, some of these things are going to happen to us. They're inevitable. We live in a fallen world. We're going to experience tragedy. We're going to get bad news. We're going to experience heartache. Only a fool would go through life totally unprepared for something that they know is going to happen. And yes, God is always there, and he uses us to be his hands and feet, or should I say in this circumstance, his arms of love for us to feel his embrace. The time to build a safety net, that's something to catch you, kids, a safety net. The time to build that is now. The time to build that support of friends and family is now, not when the trouble comes, because we know the Bible tells us trouble will come. So what is God's safety net? Well, it's a group of other believers. You don't need hundreds. You just need five or six. A group of other believers who are committed to God and committed to you. I heard a pastor share this example about the importance of being part of a community of believers. Listen to his words. There was a guy who came to church for about seven years. He sat way up in the bleacher. He never got involved in anything, never joined a life group. He came to worship, and then right after the service, he just darted out the door. One day, he had a heart attack and was in the hospital for two weeks. Well, I was traveling and didn't hear about it until I got back. And when he got out of the hospital, he came to church and said, I'm leaving the church. And the preacher said, why? He responded, because it's unfriendly. Nobody visited me in the hospital. And as he left, I thought, eh, it's kind of your fault. He had never cared about anybody but himself. He had never cared enough to meet anybody, to get to know the people, even just the people he sat with on Sunday. He never got into a life group, never shared. I think it was his fault that when a crisis came, nobody was there for him because he never made any connections. Friends, that's not how God intended us to go through this life. Here's God's plan for us. It comes from Romans chapter 12. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. My friends, community is God's answer to despair. You were made to share your life with others. Now is a time to find the people who will support you through life, who will rejoice with you in your victories and weep with you in your trouble. Kids, I'm going to ask you to leave grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, and come on up here. Miss Leslie and I have something we want to give to you to, to, to take, and hopefully it will remind you about what we're talking about this story. So come on up, children.
You just come on up here just like you were for the children's message and just have a seat. Miss Leslie's got something to give to you guys. <sighs> you can go ahead and give those to the children, Miss Leslie. What Miss Leslie has given to the children is a little boat. Kids, I want you to take those boats. I want you to look at them. And I want you to think about how blessed we are to live in a part of the country where we can go out on the water any time that we want. All year round, we have the opportunity to go out in the lakes and streams. We even get to go out into the ocean. How many of you guys have been out in a boat before? A couple of you? Yeah? Uh-huh. What did you do when you went out in the boat? Oh, excellent. He beat me to the punch. He's already in boating safety. All right. What kind of activities did you do when you went out in the boat? Played a game. Played a game? What else? Anybody else? Anybody go fishing? Anybody go fishing? Went fishing? Anybody go water skiing or, or, or tubing? Now, I'm from up north, so tubing up north. Oh, Miss Leslie brought me a life jacket because we're talking about boating safety. So, there we go. <laughs> so. So when out from up north, when we talk about going tubing, we're not talking about riding an inner tube behind a boat and it's nice and warm in the water. When we talk about tubing, we talk about sliding down a hill that's covered in snow on an inner tube. So when you talk about tubing, it has kind of different meanings depending on where you're from in the country. So we already talked about one thing for boating safety, the very first thing, right? Life jacket. Got to have your life jacket, not just on, but you want to have it fastened. Want to have it ready to go, all right? So I know mine looks for me, it's called an auto inflate. It blows up and gets real big. Trust me, I've tested it, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm going to take that off for right now. There we go. Thank you, Miss Leslie. There's something else you need to do when you go out in a boat. You need to check the weather report, right? Because you don't want to go out in the boat if it's going to storm, are you? No, this the worst thing to do is to be out in a boat when it's going to storm. <sighs> One minute it can look really, really beautiful and nice like it looks outside right now. And then the next thing you know, it gets all dark and the, the wind and the waves come up. Or maybe there could even be hail and lightning. And being out in the water, that'd be scary, right? And it'd be dangerous. I want to share a story with you guys. Do you guys know I was a fisherman? You know, I was a fisherman. Yes. When I lived in Michigan, I used to fish bass tournaments. I spent a lot of time out on what's called the Great Lakes. Those are the lakes that are around Michigan. And I used to love going bass fishing. And I got a little competitive, I have to admit, in these bass tournaments. Now, there was one day my buddy and I were out in a bass tournament, and the fish, they were biting. We were bringing in big, smallmouth bass, all right? really good ones and we saw a storm coming in and we didn't want to stop fishing so we kept fishing and all of a sudden my fishing rod it started my hands my graphite rod is tingling i'm going that's strange and my buddy he cast out over the water and his line just kind of hovered for a second before it sat down in the water. And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and we went, oh, no. We dropped our fishing poles, got to the bottom of the boat, and wham, a lightning bolt hit just a couple hundred yards from us on the shore. Wow. Now, I don't always claim to be the sharpest crayon in the box, but I learned my lesson that day. I have never fished through a storm again. So... <clears throat> Mm. So we read a gospel lesson today. What happened in the gospel lesson that we read? Do you all remember? It's the same, same story that we read last week. <laughs> what happened? What did Jesus and the disciples do? After that. They got in a boat and did what? No, they didn't go fishing. They went traveling. <laughs> they went to cross to the other side. And, and it was late. Jesus was tired. He was doing a lot of ministry. So what did Jesus do while they were sailing across? He took a nap. Right. How many of you have ever taken a nap in a boat? Yeah. 
I did one time with a fishing pole in my hand, and that fishing pole is still at the bottom of Lake St. Clair. <laughs> yeah, I fell asleep. Fast came, took it right out of there. So, but Jesus fell asleep, and then what happened? Yes, the wind and the waves came up and the boat started sinking and the disciples got all scared. And what did they do then? Woke up. They went to Jesus and said, don't you care about us? We're going to drown. And what did Jesus do? He stopped the storm. He didn't just say, okay, take your time, storm. Calm, it, calm down. No, he stopped the storm, right? Stopped it dead in its tracks. Last week we talked about how stopping the wind was a miracle, but stopping those waves, immediately an even greater miracle. So Jesus is still with us today, just like he was with the disciples. We just, we don't see his physical presence. That means, you know, we don't see his body like you guys see mine right now. We know who Jesus is. We love Jesus. Jesus loves us. Jesus is our Savior. He's the Son of God. He is the great high priest who intercedes for us so we can go directly to God now. Unlike in the Old Testament, when they had to have an intermediary, somebody to go in between. Oh, man. So whenever we're dealing with sudden storms, what kind of storms do you guys deal with in your lives? What kind of storms? You know what I'm talking about? I'm using a metaphor here. Bad storms. Bad storms. There's trouble. It could be trouble at school, right? It could be trouble with your brothers or sisters or, or with your friends. You can't agree on the same rules. I mean, that's a pretty big deal when you're a kid, right? And there's other big storms. Sometimes it could be health. You know, either we get hurt or mom and dad are sick. But Jesus is promised to be with us through all of that. So today... I want to share a bunch of Bible verses with you guys. And the BYG students, a couple of weeks ago, made some posters. And they're going to come on up, and they're going to stand in front of the altar rail. As I, so guys, come on up. And then as I call your verse, just go ahead and hold it up. If you got two, you got to do double duty. So, but I'll get to your verses in just a minute. So, um, children, if you could, at this point, Go sit over there on that first pew because when we're done with this, I got something I want you all to see. So we need to remember that God is for us. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? We, we mentioned that one already, right? Psalm 118, verse 6. If only... We really believe this. We want to believe it, as I said. We try to believe it. We will ourselves to believe it, but we can get so frightened about what people and circumstances and all that scary stuff that's out of our control. But the Bible also says, the maker of heaven and earth is for us in Psalm 146, 6. The Bible is full of his promises. And while these students are here, I'm going to have them hold up just a few of those promises. One of them, the king of glory is for us, Psalm 24, 8. Yeah, right there. The sovereign Lord is for us, Psalm 68, verses 19 through 20. The creator of the universe is for us, Genesis chapter 1. Our great God is for us, Psalm 95, verse 3. The Most High is for us, Psalm 91, 1. Our Compassionate Lord is for us, Psalm 116, 5. The Prince of Peace is for us, Isaiah 9, 6. I can keep going. The Healer is for us, Psalm 147, 3. Our Unchanging Father is for us, James 1, 17. Our promise keeper is for us, 2 Peter 3, 9. The ultimate forgiver is for us, 1 John 1, 9. Now, that's all the signs I had them do, but we could keep going and going and going. Thank you, BYG students. You guys can go back and have a seat where you were. 
when we remember that God is for us and what he has done, we're going to be more likely to walk with hope, to, to be encouraged and to encourage others when things are threatening us, when things are feeling like they're going to overwhelm us. Friends, what we fill ourselves up with every day is important. Students, you know, children, you know, what you eat is important, right? If you eat nothing but junk food, you're going to get sick. If you eat only once a week, you're not going to do so healthy. Well, it's the same in our spiritual lives. We need to be feeding on God's word and fellowshipping, not just eat once a week on a Sunday morning when we come to church. What we fill ourselves with is important. When we're faced with something that's not true, it helps us to understand and see, oh, that's not true. That's not the word of God. It's contrary to the word of God. When we're faced with those troubles, it gives us strength. We worship God just like we are right now together. We can worship God out in a fishing boat or out in a hunting blind. The Bible tells us where two or three are gathered, that the Holy Spirit is there among us when we are talking in his name. That is pretty cool that we can enjoy the creation that he has made for us. When we walk through life with like-minded followers of Jesus, there's this built-in encouragement for us. We experience life together. That's why I like to call small groups life groups. Now, children, when I was writing this message, there was a song, and some of you adults are probably way ahead of me on this one, if you have children that are in their 20s. This song was all over the place. My boys were, are 25 years old now, my oldest two. And that was right at the peak of a program called Veggie Tales. Anybody hear of Veggie Tales before? <laughs> yeah. So I think some of you all who know that know exactly where we're going with this song. So if you know the words, if you know the song, I want you to sing it out. But kids, we put a little video up on the wall here for you. And we're going to play that song for you to remind us of something really important, but we're going to put it in language that you can understand and grab onto. Go ahead, Miss Leslie. I'll just laugh and say, hey, cut that out, and get back to my sleeping, because I know that God's biggest, and he's watching all the so when I get scared, I'll think of him and close my eyes and smile. So kids, can you remember that? Can you remember that God is bigger than the boogeyman? Now, the boogeyman means anything that scares you, anything that worries you, God can handle it. He is bigger than that. Can you guys remember that? Excellent. You know what? You should share that with your friends when you see them. You guys have been excellent. You can go back to mom and dad and grandma and grandpa as we finish up our message this morning. <coughs> So I ask you, God's children of all ages, what boogeyman do you have in your life? Is it storms? 
Is it bullies? Is it dogs? Is it eating or doing things that you never done before? We're all scared of something. So let's remember that God hasn't given us a fearful mindset. He has given each one of us the love, the power of the Holy Spirit. He has given us a sound mind and at times a sound body. God is our salvation. He is our fortress. Because when we remember, when we remind ourselves and those who are journeying through this life with every single day that God is bigger than the boogeyman, we are strengthened and we can stand strong knowing that God is for us. Amen? God is for us. Nothing can be against us because God is for us. And God is indeed bigger than the boogeyman. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, sometimes we, we, we need to boil things down and really get to the bottom, Lord, to really absorb and understand your word. Father, help us to journey this life together with followers of yours, friends of ours, Lord. And Father, help us to spend time every day in your word so it can strengthen and guide us in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 If you are able, I would encourage you to stand and we'll sing just as I am. Let us join together in proclaiming our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and let us join together and pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all 
all the people according to their needs. Father, we come to you, Lord. We, we bring you Judy Brown, Lord. We thank you that they, that they found it, Lord, and that, Lord, they can take care of the, 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 the skin cancer, Lord, and we just ask that you'd be with her as she has surgery. Lord, we, we bring you Pam as she's recovering from surgery, Lord, and Leon, Lord, both, uh, both of them are recovering. We thank you, Lord, for the, 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 the surgeons and now the robots and all the beautiful things that you've given us to help us with our bodies. Lord, we continue to, to pray for Deb Santorinos, who has that finger that was torn off. Lord, help her to adjust to a new life without it. Lord, we lift you. Jason, with the aneurysm, Lord, we just ask that you would continue to walk with him. We bring you Caitlin and Kenny, Lord. Father, we just ask you be with them as they battle these diseases. We continue to lift you Laquita with those third degree burns, Lord, 40% of her body. Mar, Lord, we, we bring you uh, Hank Heller and Fran Sutherland, Lord. Lord, we bring you John Barton. They all have different afflictions, Lord, but you know each and every one of them, and you know the healing that is best, and so that is what we ask. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we lift you the family of Tony Stewart, Lord, who you called home this week. We continue to lift you the family of Pat Clark. Father, while we miss these dear folks, we don't weep like those who don't know your son. We rejoice that they are with you in glory and that we will be together one day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Father, we continue to bring to you Pastor Rod and Deb. We bring you Jason and Sharon, Lord. Lord, we bring you Rick and Isabel, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we lift you with thanks and with trembling our military, our fire, our law enforcement, our paramedics, all of our first responders, Lord, please protect them, Lord, and we thank you that they have answered this calling. Be with Warren and Stephen, be with Conrad, Connor, Cece, and with Andy, Lord. <clears throat> and Father, we lift you our ministry partners, Bethel Maritime. We lift you, Christy, and the staff at the Dive Savannah, Lord, be with our GRITS group on Monday as, as they seek to bless others through multiplying the efforts and bringing food and comfort, Lord. Father, we ask you to be with John, Carol, Danny, and Rebecca and the great work they're doing to translate your word for the people to hear them. And we thank you, Lord, that we can partner with organizations such as Effingham Habitat. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray our offering prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have mercy in us, ourselves, our time, our possessions. stand and we'll sing our response. <laughs> the night that he was betrayed, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus, took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup 
and he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, this is the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So we drink this cup, we eat this bread. Yes, remembering the act, the sacrifice that he made, but also clinging to his promise of forgiveness and his presence. Let us pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing on you day.
humbly stand for a communion blessing. And may the body and blood of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in the days to come. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, Father, for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this holy meal and the sacrifice of your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for awakening the faith within our hearts. We hear your voice and zeal and celebrate your holy presence. Melt us, mold us, fill us, use us. In Jesus' name, amen. May the God of hope, may the God of peace fill you with all joy and hope in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in that hope, in that peace, and in that love, and share it with your neighbors. Amen. Let us sing our sending song, Bless Be the Ties That Bind. Mm -hmm.